the secret uh, for women who intend to serve their society or uh, their country at uh, higher political levels is uh, to keep that uh, feminine attribute, to keep that feminine perspective while coming into power. Because sometimes women tend to forget that they're women. They think that if they come to power, they have to be a man. I think what we lack today in the world's power structure is that feminine attribute. Uh, there are so many, so many uh, now conflicts, issues, wars, uh, and a lot of that goes back to the lack of affection and compassion. Women have that affection and compassion, and they have to keep it when they come to power, when they come to politics. The secret is to keep that womanhood and uh, not to try to become a man when you come into politics. Uh, but uh, also uh, resilience is very important and uh, to be able to uh, stand on what you believe is right. And that's sometimes difficult and you have to sometimes uh, face hardships and difficulties. Uh, but I think that that's a very, uh, there's a positive prospect in uh, Iran for women in different social and political spheres. And uh, I have high hopes for the women of my country uh, in terms of the future that c they can build in Iran and the role that they can play in our society. I think uh, the general trend for Iranian women has been a positive trend, although there have been certain hurdles, there have been setbacks, like women in any society. There have been advances in terms of education, uh, in terms of uh, social and political opportunities for women. Uh, we have had many advances. But uh, we still have our challenges, uh, sometimes in the legal system, sometimes the hardships that women in uh, the realm of politics they face, uh, activists, sometimes journalists, uh, women face more hardships, more difficulties. In practical terms, uh, we are facing an improvement in the overall role of women and uh, the fact that more and more girls are well educated, they're attending universities, and uh, they're looking forward to playing an instrumental role in the building of their society. So uh, that is positive. Although, as I mentioned, we also have challenges like any other society. Uh, we hope to overcome those challenges and we hope to be able to advance. Uh, we also have um, the paradigm of uh, women's advancement within the Islamic context. Uh, there are differences between this paradigm and what happens in industrialized countries or other countries. And I think that that's, that's very important to address the issue of uh, uh, the differences and uh, how that is different and how that uh, brings about a, uh, a different opportunities for women uh, and uh, it's, it's an area for dialogue and exchange of experiences between the East and the West. I think that uh, Japan has been a pioneer in uh, working with different countries in the world on the issue of the environment. And uh, this is very important because we see environmental issues as global issues. We don't see it at a national level. Uh, these are problems without passports. 
uh, a problem, an environmental issue uh, which arises in one part of the world will adversely affect the whole world. So uh, in this light, I think that cooperation between Iran and Japan is instrumental on environmental issues. We hope to witness uh, collaboration on uh, clean technologies in areas like uh, curbing air pollution, both for the automotive industry as well as the uh, the large-scale industries that we have in Iran, uh, being able to uh, control and regulate CO2 emissions, energy efficiency is a very important issue for us. And uh, we know that uh, Japan has uh, successful experiences and technologies in this regard. Also, reviving our lakes and wetlands, we have Urumia Lake, which is shrinking up and drying up. And that is in part due to climate change. It's due to that international uh, issue. The adverse effects of climate change on our country uh, has resulted in an increase in temperature, increased evaporation, and drying up of some of our wetlands and our lakes. So uh, we hope to work with Japan on uh, reviving Lake Urumia, uh, improving our uh, irrigation methods, sustainable agricultural practices uh, is an important area where we hope to work with uh, Japan, we hope to work with JICA, and uh, we hope to be able to exchange experiences in this very important area. I think that that's uh, a very good question because uh, uh, foundations like the uh, Sasakawa Peace Foundation, uh, they can play an instrumental role in uh, public diplomacy. They can play an instrumental role in establishing dialogue and understanding among societies. Uh, on issues which are contentious issues, uh, on issues which are uh, important for both uh, cultures. I think uh, it's very important to uh, see an, the role, the pivotal role of such um, non-profit, private foundations or NGOs uh, in uh, maintaining this dialogue and this exchange, cultural exchange, uh, social exchanges and uh, it could also help to uh, improve uh, the conditions of our societies on both sides, to learn from each other, to learn from our experiences. Uh, I think that we have experiences on both sides which are very worthwhile to learn from each other and uh, we have to make sure that this is a uh, two-sided uh, exchange of experiences, learning on both sides from each other and uh, being able to move ahead uh, in a spirit of dialogue and understanding.